Welcome digital asset fans. I have an interesting video in store for everyone. All you XRP, XDC, XLM, Algorand, Quant, Hedera fans out there. Anybody who is into DLT technology, you're not going to want to miss this video. We're going to hear from journalist Whitney Webb speak on the birth of a new financial system. What we're witnessing is a famous problem reaction solution scenario that has been mapped out and there will be a Bretton Woods moment similar to World War II to usher in a new order. This is not a matter of if but when, as the debt piles up, the right event will pop that everything bubble and a new system will be enforced. She pretty much states that this has been planned out, mapped out for some time and the global elites are positioning everything for this massive change. She states that a digital ID and a CBDC will equal mass surveillance over the population. And with the tokenization of all assets on chain, which BlackRock envisions, even a tokenization of nature, will give these organizations mass control over our lives. So join me as we watch this video. We're going to look into the dark side of all this new technology. Let's go ahead and begin. Don't forget to keep your valuable crypto assets safe and offline with a decent biometric wallet. If you haven't taken your assets offline yet, now is the time to do it. Think about it with possible risk of cyber attacks or exchanges going down or freezing your assets. It's smart to get them offline and onto a hardware wallet. If you purchase it through an affiliate link in the description of any video, you get an amazing deal and it does help support the channel. Thank you. Here's a quick wise quote before we begin for you holders out there. Patience is a virtue and the best things in life are worth waiting for. That's from Julia Spira. Context, I think the digital ID is a key enabler of the surveillance, knowing what everyone is, is doing at the transactional uh, level and being able to tweak that micromanagement based on a person's activity because the digital ID isn't just limited to the financial system, right? It's like your travel, uh, your health history, your career history, your education credentials, your access to telecommunications, social media, yeah. the internet. Um, mm. You know, with the new AI era, right, they can fuse all that data, analyze it, you know, and depending on how they develop that AI algorithm, use it to uh, control people really in, in unprecedented ways. I think the, the digital ID and the CBDC and its private sector equivalence project is something that we're always sort of intended to be the same system. So there's documents from the UN, from the BIS and in related groups that are sort of been working, yeah, that have been working on this for years. Um, that essentially frame one as essential to the other, uh, using words about, you know, this is inclusionary, um, sort of, you know, the whole, um, I guess, marketing behind digital ID is that everyone needs a legal ID because otherwise they're unable to access essential services, right? Mm -hmm. And so the idea is we all have to be included in the system and they directly link that to the concept of financial inclusion and banking the unbanked, which you brought up earlier. But inherently these systems actually function in an, in an exclusionary way mm -hmm. um, based on how they've been set up. You know, they have essentially said that this is the only way, this will be the only way to prove you have legal identity. And so if you don't participate in that system as far as the state or the you know the private sector is concerned you don't exist so um, by not participating in that system you're inherently excluded from the economic system and really essentially everything um, so you have to onboard to the surveillance state or be excluded from everything so it's you know being marketed as inclusion but it's really inherently exclusionary how does this system get triggered how do, how does how do we move into the the mark carney ism well i think they sort of give it away when they say that this is the new bretton woods movement that needs to be seized so bretton woods was uh, what came out of world war ii essentially and was the creation of a new financial governance system after world war ii and this is essentially an effort to create a new financial governance system that was announced well before any sort of crisis like that, but it's probably going to need a crisis of that level uh, to be implemented and to convince people to onboard at scale. And if you subscribe to the theory that all wars are bankers' wars, which there is um, plenty of evidence to support that, I, I would say, um, that seems to suggest that perhaps, uh, you know, the this is the pre you know it's going to be a problem reaction solution type of situation where they've already made the solution they've already developed what they want to be uh the new financial governance system after this new Bretton woods moment they just need some sort of big event on the scale of world war ii or some large event 
that's you know equally disruptive in order to be like all right now it's time for a new financial governance system after this big event like they did after world war ii mm -hmm. yeah and i think the thing that's so interesting about this like debt bubble exploding is that when you know that the debt bubble is going to explode and you want to explode it into the new system the way that you sort of trigger that into the right the system that you want to get the masses to go with you is you actually want to have the most debt obligations on the record like on the board so that when the system pops all, all they'll all pop when the debt bubble pops every debt bubble will pop it will be it will be everything all at once it won't just be like oh japan's fine the u.s is f like it won't work like that everything will pop at once so in this weird way you actually want to create as much debt as possible right before the the pin bursts the bubble and then you can offer this hey we'll, we'll service your debt one to one if you come join this new universal tokenized ledger you know just sign up here mm -hmm. do a selfie of your face and give us your biometrics <laughs> and then here and here you are the solution has been created and now all the global elites need is a nice little crisis to tie it all off only this won't be a nice crisis it will be the complete collapse of the entire global financial system. A large percentage of the global population, honest everyday workers, fathers, mothers, and people with aging parents and relatives will be completely devastated, while the 1% of the 1% gain everything. Whitney believes the crisis will be on the same scale as, if not worse, than the economic devastation of the Second World War. After the crisis ends, central and commercial banks will conveniently and proudly present digital currencies, urging people to get on the system to make up for everything they lost during the collapse. However, they will only get a fraction of what was lost. Plus, they will be signing away all their privacy and other rights to the global elites. Imagine a world where you can't buy more meat because all your transactions are strictly monitored, and it's been decided that you've eaten more than your allotted portion of meat during the given period. You go to your local grocery store, pick up the goods, and as the attendant or automated system tries to ring up your order, they get a notification saying you cannot purchase more meat or else the planet dies. This is the future Whitney and Mark are warning us about. What's worse, it does not stop there. Larry Fink and others want to tokenize everything, including the natural world. Here are more clips from the video. Well, it seems like in Larry Fink's case in particular, there's um, a goal, well, a, a big am ambition there to develop new asset classes that can be used to basically fuel their existing business model and perpetuate it for like, I don't know, millennia forward. Mm -hmm. So one of these um, mm. that, uh, you know, I, I wrote, I've been writing about for a few years is the whole idea of natural assets, mm. uh, what they call nature's economy. And um, one of the groups that has been uh, sort of propelling this forward, at least one of the earlier groups, the Intrinsic Exchange Group, which is the ro a product of the Rockefeller Foundation and the Multilateral uh, Development Banking System, um, is you know has a graphic on their website called the opportunity and they show there the existing amount of assets in, in the world economy and then show what it um, if we unlock natural assets um, how nature's economy uh, you know it's like six times the amount of existing assets in the economy today and so as an asset manager, you know, BlackRock having, being able to unlock and take control of as many natural assets as, po as possible that aren't currently part of the financial system is mm -hmm. obviously um, a way for them to perpetuate what they do and, and, and deepen and expand their control over uh, not just, um, you know, people in the existing financial system, but really over the natural world as well, mm. um, and essentially turn everything alive into a tradable Wall Street financial product. And uh, the goal, as, as Fink has stated, is to have all of this on a, on a universal ledger on blockchain, presumably, um, and have it be, you know, trackable and surveillable, which is uh, interesting if you look at it through the context of risk management, which is something that Larry Fink is very open as, as having been one of the guiding lights of his whole career. Um, and so by having it all surveillable and and you know automated in a sense you know he's able to have his risk management ai thing you know aladdin you know mm -hmm. sort of exercise control over it in, in unprecedented ways i think uh, for their benefit and then of course a lot of what's happening now as we're moving into this new financial governance system is is the push to change uh, all of the infrastructure towards this you know quote unquote green um 
a green model, I guess, or decarbonization, right? Which is, of course, interface with the global carbon market, but not necessarily so. Like, it doesn't have to be. But the push is obviously to create a bunch of new infrastructure all over the world, and BlackRock um, is positioning themselves to be one of the key players in that space. Uh, they acquired, I think they're called GIP, one of the biggest infrastructure uh, you know, developers in the world. And um, I, I think one of their top guys at Davos just a few months ago was talking about how they're betting really big on, on infrastructure going forward. And it's gonna be one of the biggest uh, investment opportunities of the next several decades, actually. So I think they're uh, quite ambitious. And you know, if people aren't aware of this, I'm sure they'll get away with it, but we'll see. One of the things, too, about the natural asset thing, at least as far as the natural asset corporation model is concerned, is that you literally just go into a forest or you go to a river or lake and you identify the natural asset. And then at no cost to you, just after identifying it, you issue shares in the natural asset. Uh, a lake, a forest, whatever, and then you sell those shares uh, to the sovereign wealth funds, asset managers, whatever, and then you have an IPO and generate all this money. I mean, it's literally just pointing out something outside and being like, this is mine, I'm gonna fractionalize it and sell it to people and you're, you're producing money in, in like, you know, out of thin air. Right. essentially yeah. and you're able to do that i mean the natural world is vast and huge mm -hmm. and they're they're doing this they're financializing it all as uh, framing it as the only way to save the planet right. but really it's the only way for them to save their insane debt racket in their joint february article titled tokenized blackrock's plan to own the fractionalized world whitney and mark give a stern warning about blackrock and larry fink's plans you will allow BlackRock to build the panopticon of tokenized Earth with Americans' retirement money under the dialectic pretext of owning the liberals, unknowingly connecting all aspects of ownership to centralized databases, walled identity gardens, and fractionalized reserve assets transmitted and issued on the private blockchains of Wall Street banks. The warring factions within the Davos squabble over the spoils but never against the plan. Fulfilling Agenda 2030 requires complicit cooperation as much as compromised corporations. Do not confuse free market capitalism with cronyism or cartelism, which is the capitalist model embodied by Fink and his fellow Wall Street ilk. The problem is not just what they are planning, it's the half-truths they continuously tell the world until it is too late to stop the disaster, and how they demonize anyone trying to warn people about their plans. They've eaten so deep into our systems and every aspect of society that it would take nothing short of divine intervention to stop their plans. This is why people like Whitney often emphasize the importance of getting out of the system before it's too late. Please put your thoughts, your comments, your opinions down below. What do you think about the future of this new financial system? What do you think was stated in that video? Do you think it's doom and gloom or do you think that there's light at the end of the tunnel? I want to say thank you for watching. Please share with friends and family. Also hit the like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Take care.